it's hard to just exist as a kid. We have looming responsibilities of the next hundred years on our backs. I would describe myself as pretty angry, just at the state of the world and how everything seems to be falling apart. In one sense, that powers me to do something about it. I like the fact that I'm always walking with fire under my feet. But on the other hand, it's constantly burning. Like, it's, it's difficult. It's all part of the process. Um, no grit, no pearl. <laughs>When you think of research, you think of giant lab coat, fancy lab, million dollar machine. But I started my Tory Pine project in the garage with a $20 microscope and some random trinkets. I realized that my project wasn't just some fun garage project for myself. It actually had a really large potential to help a number of people around the world suffering from drought. It's the most intense level of drought the there is. The state continues to face extreme drought conditions. Record and now breaking water temperatures in other parts of Southern California. Climate change should be one of our very top priorities because otherwise it's just going to get worse and worse. I grew up in San Diego, California with my parents and my brother. Emily is quirky. She is a very strong, independent person. She's really a big role model for me. My parents both grew up in China and they immigrated to the United States. They didn't really know the language. They didn't know anyone. They had a lot of passion and they really wanted to start a new life. All of us are very adventurous people, so we love to explore the outdoors, and we also like to create and invent all sorts of little things. Hey, that's gonna help me out. Got the needles. San Diego gives me access to Torrey Pine Trees, the rarest pine in North America. And as a kid growing up in California's drought, I noticed that there were these gigantic puddles under the Torrey Pine Tree, as you can see in this picture right here. I was just really impressed with the tree as a whole. Like, wow, that's a lot of extra resources you got there. Um, and I was super curious about how it was able to accomplish all of this in the midst of really challenging conditions for species like this. The first time I met Emily was at the Greater San Diego Science and Engineering Fair. She was looking at pine needles, which other people had in the past, but she looked at it in a totally different way. I started my research project when I was 13 years old. First, I observed the needle surface properties and structures. I found that the needle surface is primarily hydrophilic, which means water loving. But when I looked deeper in, I noticed that there were actually alternating stripes of hydrophilic and hydrophobic, which means water fearing. It enables the water to roll down the needle and from new moisture to condense. I was really intrigued by this alternating stripe pattern, so I created some micro patterns and a fog chamber, and I started testing the different ratios of hydrophilic to hydrophobic. And I thought, you know, might as well take it to the science fair. Uh, that'll be fun. The Troy Pines Docent Society has a judging team and we awarded her a prize that year and in the next two consecutive years. I went through many, many different iterations of my prototype, and my current one is trying to mimic the structure of the Tory Pine needle as closely as possible. This is a replica of the Tory Pine needle that I made. Looks. I'm uh, hoping to make it into an actual product that harvests atmospheric moisture whether that be a standalone device or even a micro pattern that can be applied to say like tent surfaces or clothing and et cetera. Emily demystified scientific research for me. She's also the first person who's introduced me to the idea of garage lab research. We have our cookie tins, tiramisu cups, there's the $20 microscope, 
there are Legos everywhere because that's what we use to build our first prototypes. We're taking all these random things from around our house and connecting them together to make something that has a purpose and can solve a problem. I started Clearwater Innovation with my brother in 2019. Clearwater Innovation generates awareness of the global water crisis. And on top of that, it encourages students to do garage lab research. I have made it my mission to convince golf courses to implement more efficient irrigation methods. I did a project on saltwater intrusion. I'm spreading the word about climate change. To combat the issue of poor industrial wastewater filtration. And I designed a microscopic particle detector using a laser and a Raspberry Pi to combat microplastic contamination. We need new innovations and we need new ideas. You can see that they actually have three sides to them. Isn't that interesting? And these needles are so big. I realized that I, as one person, can't change the world, but maybe I can change one small piece of it and that would be enough. There are so many people who need more resources and that's something we can actually, we can do something about it. We can make a tangible impact right there. Mother Nature is my teacher for a lot of things. It's an inspiration, as well as a cause to be fighting for.